Hello, it's Susan here, and I've had quite a few people ask me about how I do my swooshes or swipes um, or whatever you prefer to call them. So I thought I would just do a little video here for you. So here's an example, um, and hopefully it's not too shiny. Uh, here's an example of um, some of the different kinds of swooshes that I've done in one, one mandala. Um, some from these really sort of chubby looking ones to more of the, the finer type ones like this. Um, now they're not perfect, but the overall picture, you can get the idea there. Um, here's another example of using swooshes to create a design um, just bringing them all in different sizes and even attempting to top dot or top swoosh which is pretty hard because I'm impatient and you really need to make sure your paint is dry to do that. Uh, I've got another example and these are some bigger, rounder, chubbier swooshes. Lots of swooshes in this design. I love metallic paints. They they really, really look great. Yummy. And another uh, design um, using swooshes. And you can also do your swooshes so they curve, um, almost like a semicolon curving. So let me get started here. I find the biggest um, thing to make your swooshes successful uh, is the paint consistency. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that and um, how that makes a difference. I'm going to uh, show you some different varieties of paint that I've used here as examples. Um, there's Apple Bot Barrel. Golden Fluid, Folk Art, Craft Smart, Martha Stewart, and Americana. Sorry, I didn't have an orange Americana. Imagine that. Um, so I think I have enough. <laughs> so they all have uh, different um, consistencies and also uh, degree of opaqueness. An opaqueness meaning how concentrated the color is. Um, so if I want something really to punch and be really uh, opaque, I like to use the golden fluid one. I find if even if you add a little bit of golden fluid to your maybe your Craft Smart or Apple Barrel paint, where it may be not as opaque because they don't have as much of the concentrated. Um, color in there um, so it dries a little bit flat so just adding a couple of drops of this will do the trick okay so I'm gonna start off doing the typical swoosh that most people do or swipe is placing a dot and then just dragging it um, this is the craft smart one uh, I find it a little bit liquidy so the more liquidy the longer the the drag will be um, where um, let's see if this one will cooperate with Americana it's kind of my favorite to work with um, will give a, a little better shape so the consistency is a little bit more like um, I don't know if I can show it to you here it has a slight, slight um, peak when you play with it, but it, it flattens out really fast. And where um, this one is, well, actually, surprise, oh, it's because it's got a blob in there. <laughs> That's not too bad. For Apple Barrel, I thought it would be a little bit thinner. Um, but the Craft Smart one is pretty fluid. It doesn't, it doesn't peak up as much, so it's quite a little bit more runny. 
where the Martha Stewart one, well, you can see right away it's, it's blobby. And when it's thicker like that, when it's thicker, well, that's not too bad. <laughs> but when it's thicker, your, your drag will sometimes be a little bit shorter. So it's important, anyway, the moral of the story, it's important to check your consistency. Um, try it out on a surface before going ahead with your dotting just to see that it's the right consistency. And if it's not, there's a couple of things we can do to change it. Um, I'm not a sponsor of Liquitex, but I really like this stuff here. Um, it's called Flow Aid, and it's a concentrate. So you read the instructions on the back and you can make your own solution. Um, and so a little bottle like this will last me a long time. So it's worth the money. Uh, if you have one that's a little bit thick, then you can use um, the, well, this is one product. There's lots of different products out there, but I use this heavy gel and it's, it is, it's a heavy gel. And you just add it a little bit at a time to your product to get the right consistency. So let's get my focus here, making sure we're not going blurry. So techniques, um, standard technique that is out there is to dot and drag. Um, if you want it to be a little bit bigger, I kind of load it up by um, adding more paint and then you can drag and you can get a bigger dot. So it's the same size tool um, but you just adding more paint and you can just, as long as you keep adding it to the same spot, you can load it up to get even a bigger dot. So you don't actually have to change tools, which is kind of nice. Um, if you wanted it to make it go even longer, you get a smaller sized, smallest size tip tool that you can and get a little bit of paint and you place the tool not down here but somewhere in the middle so when it squishes out it's going to keep the shape and you can carry on and making it even longer and I do that um, a lot to get the super long shapes um, so hopefully that helps um, you can take your dotting tool and you can also just use it like a paintbrush or a pen and you can create different shapes like that. Um, now this is a, a dry cardstock that I'm showing you here. Um, the other thing that I could suggest is your dotting surface be very smooth. The smoother your dotting surface, the better your swooshes will look. Um, whether you spray your surface with uh, sealant first, or in this case, I had this beautiful rock, but it had a little bit too much texture. So with with my leftover resin, I I put a coat of resin on it, and to get some nice swooshes. It goes on like just smooth as in anything. I really, really like dotting on a very smooth surface. Um, it just goes where you want it to go, pretty much, <laughs> within reason. Um, here's a Rennie Craft Smart one, and I can get it to go really long because it is a little runnier consistency. So as you can see, you just play around with it, have some fun. Um, what else? Oh, okay, I have one other type of swoosh to show you. And that's these uh, chubbier ones, if you can see that, like that. So what I use is a one of my dotting tools. These are the DIY Mandela Stone dotting tools. And I get those um, from Etsy. That's where I get them from. 
and it's probably my favorite dotting tool that I've used of all the different ones available out there. So what I do is I place a big dot like that. Um, sometimes I load it up so that it has a good little well of paint there. There you go. And then I take that small stylus and I bring it down. So now it looks like a lollipop. And then I go from either side and I pull it in like that. And you can just sort of almost use it like a paintbrush. And you just make the shape what you want it to be. If you want it a little bit more like a teardrop, well in this case upside down. And there you have it. You can see that. And <clears throat> you just keep practicing. So then sometimes I like to place, do a little trio. Whoops. I try not to get it to touch like that, but I start from the outside to create the shape that I want. Bring the inside in. This is where you can get the spacing. If I cut it out a little bit further, it would look a little bit better there. And then I just pull all this into the center. And then the third one, hopefully my hand's not too much in the way. I'm so right-handed here, I'll try and around <clears throat> fill that up so it's got that nice well of paint so again I pull it from the outside to get the shape I want and then the inside there so now I have a little trio and <clears throat> if you're patient enough you let that dry really well you can do a a second layer on top or even a third if your dots are big enough. Hey, oh, sorry, that was Jasper saying good morning everyone. <laughs> anyway, I hope Oh you want a dot too Jasper? Aw <laughs> Hi. Yes, you're gonna get a little bit of cat DNA in most of my work. Okay y'all, I hope the swooshes uh, help and you have some a little more success with that. Hope it helps and you have a great day.